This week we continue our coverage of the upcoming primary races in Oregon. Mail-in ballots will arrive in May and may be due back to the county election offices by May 19th. Our focus today will be on the Democratic primary for Oregon's 3rd Congressional District. But we start with two other stories related to the primaries. First, Senator Bernie Sanders has suspended his campaign to be the Democratic nominee for the presidency. And second, the Independent Party of Oregon will conduct its first large-scale use of star voting in an election for a public office. Welcome to Oregon News and Views from Social Advance. I'm Charles Dunaway. And I'm Alan Zundell. The coronavirus pandemic and its economic aftershock have revealed the glaring need for guaranteed health insurance and other social safety net programs in this nation. Despite this confirmation of his Medicare for All message, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont suspended his campaign for the presidency on Wednesday. I wish I could give you better news, but I think you know the truth. And that is that we are now some 300 delegates behind Vice President Biden, and the path toward victory is virtually impossible. So while we are winning the ideological battle, and while we are winning the support of so many young people and working people throughout the country, I have concluded that this battle for the Democratic nomination will not be successful. And so today, I am announcing the suspension of my campaign. Suspending his campaign means that he will not be actively campaigning. However, Sanders' name will still appear on the ballot in Oregon and other states, and you can still vote for him. Here's what Sanders said about that. On a practical note, let me also say this. I will stay on the ballot in all remaining states and continue to gather delegates. While Vice President Biden will be the nominee, we must continue working to assemble as many delegates as possible at the Democratic Convention, where we will be able to exert significant influence over the party platform and other functions. Then together, standing united, we will go forward to defeat Donald Trump, the most dangerous president in modern American history. And we will fight to elect strong progressives at every level of government, from Congress to the school board. As far as we've been able to determine, votes for Sanders in the Oregon primary will still result in him getting at least some delegates. Delegates can do more than vote for Sanders as the nominee at the Democratic National Convention. They could also play roles on the platform and rules committees. The rules committee will determine the rules for the nominee selection process in the 2024 presidential election. The more Sanders delegates there are this year, the more influence they could have over those rules. And Sanders' call for progress to elect progressives to other offices has relevance for Oregon's congressional primaries, including the primary for Oregon's 3rd Congressional District. We'll turn to that story in a minute. The Independent Party of Oregon will use star voting to choose its nominees for statewide offices this year. This will be the first large-scale use of star voting in an election for a public office. The party's primary will be conducted online from April 28th to May 12th, and it's open to voters who are not affiliated with a party, as well as to the 125,000 voters registered with the Independent Party. The primary will include a presidential preference poll, as well as choosing the party's nominees for statewide offices. Candidates who are registered in various parties and some who are not affiliated will be on the independent party primary ballot. For more information, go to www.indparty.com 2020-election. Star voting is a new voting method developed here in Oregon in 2014. Instead of being limited to picking only one candidate to give your vote to, you can score any of the candidates on a scale of 0 to 5. We'll have more on <clears throat> independent party election and on star voting in a later show. The Democratic primary for Oregon's 3rd Congressional District is shaping up as a challenge by Bernie Sanders supporter Albert Lee of Portland to longtime incumbent Earl Blumenauer. On this map, Congressional District 3, or CD3 as it is often referred to, is the small yellow area on the northern border of the state. It's a densely populated district, which is why it's geographically smaller than Oregon's other four congressional districts. This map gives a closer view. 
CD3 includes most of Portland and extends east of the city as well. Earl Blumenauer has held the office since he won a special election in 1996. Blumenauer has long been considered a progressive Democrat. He generally votes with his party and in the 2016 presidential primary endorsed Hillary Clinton. Here's a slightly edited campaign ad. This election is one of the most important in our lifetime. What's at stake is our democracy. We are on a path that is unsustainable. We are so grateful to have Representative Earl Blumenauer here with us today. When it comes to climate change, we have to act now. It gives me hope that there is someone fighting alongside me. Earl is working day in and day out for these issues. We developed a resolution declaring a climate emergency. We were joined by Senator Sanders, AOC, in introducing it in Congress. We need Earl Blumenau's steady hand, steady vision, and consistent voice. It is vital. This is the moment that we've all been working for. We're fighting to make sure that we are going to protect the climate. We're fighting for the health care of our families. We're fighting for the future of our democracy. In many election years, Blumenauer hasn't had any challengers in the Democratic primaries, but in 2018 he had three of them and still won with 91% of the vote. Part of that success comes down to money. These charts are from Open Secrets, the website of the Center for Responsive Politics, and are based on reports to the Federal Elections Commission. Last year, Blumenauer raised almost a million dollars, spent about a million, and still had over 800000 at the end of the year. More than half a million of that came from political action committees, and another third of a million came from individuals in amounts over $200. Only a little over $58,000 of his contributions came from smaller donations. Four Democrats have filed to run against Blumenauer in the primary. The candidate with the most visible campaign is Albert Lee of Portland. Lee is a lawyer and the dean of the Business and Computing Division of Portland Community College. He was a supporter of Bernie Sanders in 2016 and decided to heed Sanders' call for progressives to run for office. We did an interview with Lee a few weeks ago. Here's a short clip. Democracy requires choice. It's something that we haven't had here in this district in over a generation. Mm -hmm. uh, we face a series of crises that have been allowed to fester and grow. Uh, things like our homelessness crisis, the lack of affordable housing and living wages, and a climate emergency. And we need bold action and not just inspirational and aspirational words. Uh, I also believe that it, in the basic tenets of the Democratic Party when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, I think it's time that we uplift some new voices from some other backgrounds, from some other lived experiences to represent us here in the most diverse district of the state. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I think it's time that we end uh, this rule by oligarchy, uh, this oligarchy of career multimillionaire elite politicians ruling over us and replacing them with citizen representatives who know the struggle, who won't take corporate contributions, and who will truly represent and fight for the people. You can see the entire interview on the Social Advance YouTube channel or through the videos page or on our website at socialadvance.org. As a challenger to a longtime incumbent, Lee has done exceptionally well at fundraising. He raised over $70,000 last year. Only $50 was from a political action committee, Progressive Oregon. The rest came from individual donations, about a half of them over $200 and a half under. Before the coronavirus pandemic, Lee was a visible presence around Portland at many campaign events. The other three Democrats in the primary are Charles Rand Barnett, Dane Wilcox, and Matthew Davis, all from Portland. None of them filed a candidate statement for the voters pamphlet, and none of them have very visible campaigns. Charles Rand Barnett ran against Blumenauer in the 2018 Democratic primary. He spent almost $9,000 of his own money and got less than 2% of the vote. Barnett has a simple website and no social media accounts. He's a software developer and musician. Dane Wilcox is a self-employed IT consultant and entrepreneur with no previous political experience. He entered the race in September of 2019 but didn't raise enough money by the end of the year to require reporting it. He has a nice website and an active Twitter account. Other than that, we haven't seen much sign of a campaign. 
and Matthew Davis is a value analyst at Oregon Health and Science University. Like Wilcox, he has no previous political experience. He filed as a candidate last month and has no website up yet. We haven't been able to find out anything else about him. It hardly seems worth mentioning the Republican candidates. According to the Cook Partisan Voting Index, CD3 is the second most Democratic-leaning congressional district in the Pacific Northwest. Blumenauer won his first five elections with well over 60% of the vote and his last eight elections with over 70%. Republicans usually do so poorly in the district that in 2016 they didn't even run a candidate. But here's a quick look at the ones they are running this year anyway. Tom Harrison is a self-employed software and hardware developer from Oregon City. As you can see, his website is rather makeshift, but he does have social and media accounts for his campaign. Harrison was a candidate in the 2018 Republican primary for CD3, running a write-in campaign. No other Republican filed for the office, so he won the nomination. He raised $770 for that campaign and then lost the general election, only getting about 20% of the vote. Joanna Harbour is a lawyer and entrepreneur from Estacada, a small town on the southern edge of CD3. She filed for the race just last month. In addition to the usual Republican positions, she says she'll address problems of affordable housing and sex and human trafficking. She majored in political science in college and graduated magna cum laude. Frank Hecker of Gresham also filed for the race last month. He's a Navy v. veteran and a retired consultant. Hecker describes himself as part of the middle 80% between the political left and right. His positions on issues are more old school Republican than Trump Republican. For example, he actually acknowledges the reality of climate change. None of the Republican candidates filed a candidate's statement for the state voter pamphlet. Next week, we'll look at the primaries for Oregon's 4th Congressional District. Join us via one of our online social media accounts, such as on YouTube or Facebook. You can also find a link to our videos on the videos page at socialadvance.org, along with links to other videos and podcasts, including Charles' podcast, A Wider View. I also invite you to check out my podcast, A Wider View. You can see it at awiderviewradio.podbean.com and uh, on the link at the Social Advance video page and on Google Play, Apple, and YouTube. Thanks for watching, and remember, things ain't over until they're over, and the only thing that's over right now is this show.